It is verses 15 through 18. We'll have repeated reading. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Ten my sheep. And truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and others will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. Amen. Let us bless each other. Be at peace. You're the missionaries to save the world. Let us receive the desolate uh, inheritages of the desolate heritages. We are now uh, standing in front of the historical request of God. Let us bless each other, or bless myself. I am standing in front of the request of this age. Do you believe this? Once we are able to know the request of the age, then God will fill us up with His words. I bless you in the name of the Lord. This time is short, but may you truly hold on to the request of this age that is given from God. There was a Europe conference and the Europe Remnant conference that was held last week. Uh, because of your prayers, I was able to uh, come back safely. And there, God has given us the important answer. I said, hold on to the answer of this age that the remnants enjoyed. So hold on to the answer that the remnants hold on to and enjoyed and go out to the field. And that is making the absolute partisan of God inside of me. And so with that absolute partisan inside of me, go and make the absolute partisan that moves. And he said, become the successor within 10 years. Then what is the absolute partisan that God has given us or Jesus has told to his disciples? As Acts 1.3 is the works pertaining to the kingdom of God. And through you who possess this absolute partisan inside of you, you are able to make the absolute partisan that moves. So when the absolute partisan of God is made inside of me, then wherever we go inside of that field, the absolute partisan that moves will be made. So make the partisan of healing, partisan of prayer, partisan of the prosperities. And that is the time schedule of Europe and the time schedule of the remnants.
I bless you in the name of the Lord. May this be fulfilled inside of all of the believers who are sitting here today. Last week was the Easter week. So start anew with the resurrection. So today it is after the resurrection, the first thing that Jesus did. After the resurrection, there is something that the Lord did first. He has come to the disciples that He has chosen. And He quietly healed them and made them do new works. If we were Jesus, then we would have, after resurrection, we would have shown myself to all of the world. Especially to the clericalists who have crucified me or nailed me to the cross and to the authorities of Rome, we will show myself. But he quietly went to the disciples. And who were the disciples? The disciples that he went to were not just ordinary disciples. They were the disciples when Jesus was crucified. They were all in fear and despair and ran away. And especially Peter, who denied Jesus three times and even cursed Jesus, but after that, because they have to make a living, they went back to their old self. But we haven't read today, but in verse 3, they went back to fishing to make a living. And Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. They went back to their old selves and they went fishing. They casted their nets, but they caught nothing. But we must think to ourselves, are we not living this way? God has called us as an evangelist of this age. He has called us as those who remain in this age. And with a plan of saving the world, God has called me today. But when we are uh, when we are faced with the reality and the problems, we live different lives. So at times we live inside of anxiety, worries, discouragement, and resentment, and later on that will get worse and become a depression and have panic disorders. But still, people try to make an effort to make a living. But even though they make an effort, nothing works. But we are able to see ourselves who are living in the level of a non-believer. But Jesus came to those kind of disciples. And how did Jesus heal these people? These people became the main figures of the Marks of Room. And they wrote anew the church history. And they were used as the true disciples to save Rome all the way to the ends of the world. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May that blessing start anew inside of me also. Then we must hold on to two things. It is the work that the Lord did he has come to us, and what did he say? He has told us the love of Christ that does not give up. We 
if we know that somebody loves us, then we gain very uh, much strength, and we are not lonely. And it becomes a motivation where we, even after giving up, we can start anew. Right now, many of the people fall into depression. They fall into depression because of many things, but the main thing that makes people fall into depression it is that they are lonely, that nobody loves them. And that is why many people fall into depression. But in the opposite sense, if somebody loves me, then we gain great strength from that and we even receive healing from that. But the more uh, this one person fell into de uh, depression and was in despair, but one day he met the gospel and he was able to figure out that nobody could truly love him. But he was able to realize that the Lord quietly loves him. It is in the word of Zechariah. And he was able to really feel the love of the Jehovah God that was quietly, uh, quietly inside of his life. So while we are young, through the parents, in our unconscious and the subconscious, we are able to feel the love of our parents. And we are able to see the remnants who grew up in the love of their parents, they are different. So it's very important for the pre-infant children. You're able to see that the remnants who grew up inside of prayer and inside of the war, they um, are raised up differently. And they're able to realize many things through their friends and in the environment. But you guys must know the fact that after the problem of Genesis 3, all the people are now incomplete. So many people live inside of scars and self-centeredness and their own standards and level and their own greed. And that now goes as far as it develops into a spiritual problem, giving scars and receiving scars. But to heal us from that, God has sent us His Son, Christ. Isaiah 61.1 The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. And what does it say? He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. God, to heal me, has sent us His Son, Christ, how does he heal us? He was crucified on the cross and showed us the love of God. And that's why it says in Romans 5.8, But God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
How did he heal us? 1 John 4.10 and this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us. Because He loved us, He has sent His Son to be the ransom for our sins. And we are able to become the children of God. And it says in Colossians 1.13 It says he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And in Ephesians 1.3 it says Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Lord, being crucified on the cross, He has received all the curses that we must receive and He has solved all of our sins and curses. And even though we have received salvation, we could fall into unbelief and have faced conflicts and there are many problems of reality and the environments and even deceived by Satan. But that, was, that could mean that we are inside of unbelief. Though we have the gospel, but we are falling into religion. But if you go deeply inside of that center, it is because we are not able to realize the love of Christ which we have received life that is why we fall into the deceptions of Satan but even though the disciples failed and was broken down why did the resurrected Jesus come back to us? It is confirming the love of God that never gives up. In Philippians 1.6 And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. To the disciples who were catching nothing, Jesus told them to throw a cast a net to the right side, and they did. If you see in verse 6, there were so many fish that they were not even able to pick up the net. No matter what kind of despair that we may be in, if you just hold on to the word, and then you're able to see the power of God work inside of me. Are there people who are in discouragement? Even though you cannot hear the word, just stay inside of the stream of the word. Even if you're in the midst of despair, if you stay inside of the world, then you're able to restore your faith. That is when the power of God is revealed inside of our lives. And during the Europe conference, I was able to have this communication with this person. There's only nine uh, missionaries that are inside of Tarapang. It's inside of that place, in, in the, inside of Europe. And 15 churches. And many disciples gathered together and have forum. And we had this interview with this one couple. And the husband 
He's a neuroscientist. And he's a specialist of all specialists. But he confesses this. Every night, the ambulance goes back and forth during the night. It means that many people are dying out. The more powerful nation or the more elite they are, many people are dying out. But holding on to the gospel, this person won over all of that, those kind of lives. But later on, he was faced with panic disorders. But even inside of that despair, he was able to hold on to the gospel. And he just held on to that, uh, the gospel and stayed inside the stream of the world. God restored his faith and even blessed him with the blessing of this age. He said he had no choice but to grab hold on to the word inside of despair. And he was able to receive strength from the word. Just to teach his children math, he looked through the textbooks. He gave up on uh, math when he was young. But to teach his children, he had to read the textbooks and he was able to find new things. And he just placed that online, how he taught his children, and now that spread as a rumor. Now that even became a textbook and is sending off to Taiwan and China. And even people from the region of Gangnam, they want to use this as the textbook. He gave up on math. And he just had to no choice but to hold on to the word because of his spiritual problems. And he just held on to the word and restored his faith. And God gave him the blessing of uniqueness. And this is the blessing that is given to us. Are you guys in the midst of despair? Are you in the midst of discouragement? Or are the environments pressing you down? Even then, do not lose hold of the word. And if you restore faith, then the power of God is revealed inside of your lives. What is the reason why we must hold on to the word? And what is the reason why we must hold on to the prayer topics inside of the word? What is the reason we must follow after the word? It says in John 15, 7, it says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. If the word of God dwells inside of me, then the word, the power of God will be fulfilled inside of our lives. And receive the love of God, love of Christ that never gives up. And secondly, when we concentrate on the love of Christ, then we are able to find the mission. And now Jesus asked Peter, He asked, Do you love me more than those people? He asked three times repeatedly. So what does it mean by those people? And why did Jesus ask this kind of question? Because 
He's telling us to do now discard the things of the world and go inside of the depth, height, and the width of the love of Christ. And if you see Ephesians 3, 18 through 19, it says, as they may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and the height and depth, it says. And to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And again, Jesus asks, Do you love me? So now let go of everything of the world and now go inside of the love of Christ of the death width and height of the love of Christ. And he still and waits for us unendingly. And he's stretching out his arms and he's waiting. And when we go inside of that and make the resolution, we all of our hidden scars will be healed. And, and that is when the forces of darkness that, are, that kept on deceiving me because of the hidden scars will crumble down. And when we, are when we are filled with the power and the love of the Lord, then there is no space for the forces of darkness to work. And we call that the filling of the Holy Spirit. And may this bless be, blessing be upon all of you. Jesus makes Peter confess three times. He makes him confess that I love you, Lord. Do you have that confession? When you have the confession of the love towards Christ, then go inside of the covenant of Mount Calvary. It means that he has finished everything. He has solved all of our sin, curses, and hell. So no longer be deceived. Go to the path of victory. And inside of that, that's where our status is. And when we pray, holding on to that covenant, then the kingdom of God uh, is established and the work and the power of the Holy Spirit is shown. And we just have to make this be imprint, root, and nature inside of our thoughts and inside of our unconscious and our subconsciousness. And that is when it's not just Christ, it becomes only Christ. And that is when the confession that Peter gave is given from our mouth. And when we concentrate on the love of Christ, we're able to experience and realize the mission. And we're able to see that the disciples even stake their lives for it. So to the disciples, Jesus already said in verse 18, Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. It means um, the martyrdom. And that is why you're able to see that the disciples, they were all murdered because of the gospel. 
mission is the method where the God, uh, the Lord loves us. So who are the lamb that the Bible is speaking of? God go, uh, Jesus tells the disciple, feed my lamb, then who are the, feed, uh, who are the lambs? It's the unbelievers who are still in the midst of destiny curses and bound by the darkness. And God has a plan to save them. And we are relaying the gospel of Christ to those people, finding those people and relaying this. And that is feeding my lamb. So the love of Christ is complete and the power is revealed through the resurrection of Christ. So the cross, speaks, a cross and the resurrection speaks about the power of Christ. So we call this evangelism and missions. So we must truly place this inside of us. And even our elder prayed today. We have the Presbytery camp taking place. And the Presbytery camp that will raise up the absolute partisans throughout all of Daegu will begin. So it's been 17 years since we last uh, that our church became the base camp. So truly pray for the, your, the people that you want to evangelize to and so that the accurate gospel could be relayed to those people. 여러분 관계된 모든 현장에 한 번이라도 이 복음은 듣, 듣도록 되어져야 합니다. So you must make it so that this gospel is heard to those who are related with you at least once. And who saves them? It is God. So truly have the prayer where you want to relay the gospel to all the people at least once to the people I am related with, then God will open up the doors. Right now, people are living inside of a disaster and pain without them knowing. And they don't know the reason why this problem has come to them. And there is the hidden lambs that God has prepared. So go and find them. So for this camp, you must all may all of our believers face the uh, match your direction to this camp. In the past, people who have work, they would rest work and come to this camp. So inside of all of your fields, truly pray for the camp. Because the gospel is not relayed, all of our fields has become a disaster zone. It became a disaster zone where they can, where people cannot live on without the gospel. That is why we must make the absolute partisan to shine the light inside of Daegu. We must make it so we must shine the light so the people who are inside of discouragement could come see that light and come. And before that, we have the missions conference taking place. And this is one of the great answers that God has given us. 
God has given us the blessing where, and the answer where we are able to serve the Latin Americans. And today we have time of offering. And it's the time where your offerings are used as the economy of light. The fact that we're being used, that itself is a blessing. The small offering that you give to save the Latin Americans, that itself is a blessing. And the answer to save that one nation will be given to you. So pray. Through the work and the businesses that I do, may you bless me with the economy of light to save one nation. And that is, go feed my lamb. And second, what is it? There are so many people who have received salvation but still living in the midst of scars. In Matthew 25, 40 says, And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did, did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. So there are so many lambs that are living in the midst of scars, even though they have received salvation. We must truly heal them with the gospel. Are you guys in the midst of scars? Are you facing hardship because of depression? Just concentrate on three things. Before you start in the morning, have a quiet time where you can truly receive the spiritual power. Then at night, have a time where you can prepare the word and where you have time to hold on to the word and where you organize everything. And with those two things during your night, uh, daytime, may you find the plan of God. And this is the method of making the partisan inside of me. It is the method to make the partisan of the throne. And that is when even my characteristics change. Even my anger, my depression will change because the partisan changes. If you are in the midst of scars, try this. As you open your eyes in the morning, as you concentrate deeply inside of the Word of God, and may have time where you truly receive the spiritual power. But as you live on through your day, you live so busily inside of your lives. So to have success in that, you must have a quiet time. And at night, you must have a time where you organize everything and receive the word. And with those two things taking place, with, during the day, all the incident people that you meet and the situations that you meet, you're able to change all of that to prayer. And we are influenced by people so much. And that becomes a stress to us, and that stacks up. And problems have no choice but to come. So, but if you have time to receive power in the morning, and if you organize the word and have it with us, then the people we meet, the environment, the situations that we meet, that will all change into prayer. And going moreover, those will become the blessings. And that is when healing takes place inside of us and truly enjoy those blessings.
And third, and the remnants who are preparing for the future that is not yet to be complete, they are the Lamb. The remnants are not complete yet. They're preparing for the future. Us adults, we might be complete, but the remnants, they're preparing for the future, so they're not complete yet. Then, preparing for the future that is yet to come, what must they prepare now? We must help them to find their talent inside of prayer. And that is why we must open up the age of the three-day weekend inside of the church, and we are praying for the answer of the three courtyards. Our remnants must go out to the field. Before they go out to the field, they must hold on to the answer before that. They must hold on to the answer and study. They must hold on to the answer and go out to work. God has given us the power of the absolute partisan of the throne to win over the world and the remnants must hold on to that and go out to the field. So we must save the non-believers and we must heal those who are in the midst of scars and we must help the remnants prepare for their future inside of prayer. I'll come to the end of my words. The resurrected Christ is still now healing us with the power and the love of Christ. And with that, God wants to save and heal the world through us. And that is what Jesus has said. Do you love me? Inside of this que question, I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you have the true healing and the blessing of a new beginning start inside of your lives.